For the purpose of this movie, we were not able to get any World War II submarines because the few that are left are not seaworthy enough. So we constructed from scratch in a shipyard a 600-ton, full-sized, seaworthy vessel, diesel-powered, that we went out to sea with and we filmed our sea battles in the ocean with this full-sized submarine replica. Discovering that the predecessors of the, of the submarines that won World War II for the Americans were um, boats that were designed in 1917 and were called the S-boat series, or R-boat, S-boats, and a number of uh, earlier submarines that were uh, based on Holland Lake designs, which, um, ironically enough, is what the 7th Sea for the Germans was based on, but a very new version designed and built in the 30s. So, similar in, in size, similar in proportion and design, but the German machine being a much more sophisticated piece of equipment. What you see there is less a piece of art, it's a piece of work. It is uh, enormous work to have all the, the research of the old submarines from the S-33, which is here behind me, the blue one. There was really nothing left. It is just some old, very flurry pictures, photographs, which are also different from each other, so we are very free. But on the other side from the, the other one, the German one, there are very precise, um, even, even drawings of that time uh, available, even if there is none rest, uh, none, uh, none of the real ones left over on the world. In construction, of course, we have all of the basic crafts, and uh, from carpenters to, in this case, a lot of blacksmiths, as they call them here in Europe, which are metal workers, welders, and shapers of metal, you know. It's, like, it's large sculpture is what it is. Uh, and then, of course, painters, and then mold makers, master mold makers. A lot of the, the uh, set pieces that you see behind me and over to my right uh, with the, that make up the submarine are of all materials, everything from fiberglass to metal to wood to, uh, you know, Bondo, you know, all kinds of <laughs> stuff. So our job was to recreate as authentically as we could the German submarines, the American submarines, um, the weapons, uh, uh, the props, um, all these things, uh, and it's a very difficult job, but it's in some ways easier to recreate than to completely synthesize from scratch. It was easy to be very creative in the framework of these uniforms. We just tried to make it as authentic as possible. Uh, in fact, it's so authentic that Dino came to me one day and he said, they don't look German. And I said, but Dino, that really is the way that the submarine service looked. And I think he had in mind much more that terrible SS military look. I've never had to make as many clothes, and it was fun to do. We're doing things in this movie that have never been done before. In Rome, we shot on the largest soundstage in Europe, and we constructed the most immense uh, gimbal that's ever been created for motion picture. And they set the submarine on top of the gimbal, and it would raise and lower and shake so they could create the effect. Um, it also, at, on one end of it, it had these huge water tanks that would spill water into the submarine so that when they were shooting, they could really create the experience that the actual submarines were, go was, were going through. Um, and for us, what was was great for us was that it it just it, it felt so real. This is uh, one of the biggest uh, open water tanks in the world and uh, they have constructed two 100 foot rain towers and uh, I've been told these are the biggest rain towers ever ever done for a movie motion picture. I've been in some big effects pictures like Twister but uh, I've never seen rain towers like this. It's not really too hard to get in character on these sets because the sub is, you know, is, is amazing. It's, what, 400 tons of steel that they've constructed, two of them, and, um, uh, you know, shooting out there in, in the uh, ocean um, and the rain. And it's just, it really allows you to really be there and get into it. And they've done an amazing job. One thing that unifies the whole cast in this movie is they're all actors who, in my opinion, are able to imagine themselves in uh, these kind of circumstances. And that's very important when you're doing a picture like this where it's so technical and one day I'm putting an actor out at the ocean, I'm saying, okay, you're in the middle of a sea battle now, you can't see the shells that are landing three feet from you, but 
you know, you got to imagine that they're there. And there's certain kind of actors that understand how to take that and make it real for the audience. My feeling is if you do stuff for real, it just, it looks real. And it has a certain quality. It not only helps the visual quality on film, but it also helps the performances because the actors, the less that the actors have to manufacture in their own heads about what's going on, the more stimuli that you can give them on the set, the better performance I think you get as well. Um, and ultimately it just adds up to a more visceral experience for the audience. My goal in making this movie was to create an authentic World War II submarine experience for the audience. I don't want the audience just to go watch this movie, I want them to experience it. And it's very challenging because the physical elements are so difficult and you have to achieve authenticity. There's so many people out there that'll write you the letter of, you know, the uh, the X widget was improperly connected to the Y widget, this movie is outrageous, you know, and, and, and submarine buffs and history buffs. So we knew that we had to achieve a, a, a level of accuracy that was uh, unassailable by people who'd be seeing the movie.